it's important to think about how cities can become sustainable. Um, and given uh, the importance of both electricity and, and heating to cities, um, you, um, it would be great to have, have, have solutions that, that, can, that can fit this. So um, I've been working on batteries of various sizes, uh, I guess, um, since, since I graduated from college throughout my PhD. Uh, and as I began to think about what, what a big battery should l look like, I thought, as we uh, need larger, store, larger scale storage to deal with all of the renewables that are coming online, solar, wind, uh, geothermal, for example, a battery should probably look more like an, a metal processing plant than your traditional uh, AA type cell. What's interesting about metal production is that it's basically uh, half of a battery. The way metals are produced, the way particularly copper, um, copper aluminum, and zinc is a lot like charging a battery. Uh, right now, when we consider um, zinc batteries or lithium batteries, we consider them as, as, as primary. Uh, you, you use them once and then ship them to some recycling center for them to be reformed. You, you can't recharge them. And the reasons why you can't recharge metal anode batteries are, are quite complex. It has to do with, with the, the physical change within the battery, and that gets into sort of some of my fundamental research. Um, so we're looking at systems where we can, we can access these, these types of batteries for, for high cycle life systems, really, really thinking in a very aggressive sense of how we, don't, we get them um, at first to 500 to 1,000 cycles and then to 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 cycles. This is a very aggressive goal, but because we, we think of the system not as, as this closed battery, but this open reactor, we have more tools available to, to recondition this anode. Um, in terms of, of commercialization or, or, or demonstration, uh, we, we have a, a working cell uh, at the Energy Institute now uh, that's being fed by a solar panel on, on the roof of Steinman Hall. Uh, you know, this isn't, this isn't commercially optimized, but, but it works and it's cycled on, on the order of 500 times now, or similar batteries to this stack have cycled 500 times. And, um, it's more complex than, than a standard battery because there's a lot of plumbing involved, but because we can change a lot of things um, in situ while the battery is running, uh, we, can, we can fix things. So normally with a battery, if something begins to go wrong, it's very hard to go in there and, and do um, open heart surgery. Uh, it's it basically impossible. Uh, we're creating a battery that we can fix things as it's running. So. Uh, a demonstration system is running now, and if all going well, we should be able to have a larger scale system um, on the order of, let's say, uh, 10 to 100 kilowatt hours in, in the next few years. More aggressive systems are not using zinc, uh, but aluminum. So, so zinc is a very cheap metal. It's very abundant. Um, far more supply of it than lithium. We are considering some lithium cells, but lithium um, is, uh, there's a lot less lithium in the world. It's much harder to, to deal with in this open fashion. So if we can have a, a secondary aluminum system, which has basically been the holy grail, not only of batteries, but of um, uh, aluminum processing for, for the last 100 years, uh, we would have a very special thing indeed. Um, uh, aluminum batteries are by no means uh, something new. They've been used uh, in a primary sense for military and, and space applications for the past 50 years. Recharging it is a real trick, and we, we have some very basic prototypes that, that show that we can, we can do this. Now, in terms of scaling this up and commercializing it, um, I'm, I'm hesitant to give any exact numbers for fear of eating my words, but you, you know, uh, we can have a, a basic demonstrator probably in, in two to three years um, of something that, that could power a laptop in a, in a rechargeable fashion. Um, going from there, can we, can we actually scale that up? We're just beginning to see what the side reactions are and what the effects of, of cycling are. So that's, that, that's a longer term, and I'm, I'm hesitant to give... Um, a time frame on that. It would be great if, if we can commercialize something like that, let's say in 10 years. If, if, if we were able to make a couple breakthroughs this year, um, 10 years for a cycling al aluminum cell would be fantastic.